सो फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार वन मोर सैटरडे एंड वन मोर एपिसोड ऑफ सैटरडे विस्टम विथ मी फेक न्यूज हैज बीन मेकिंग रूटीन एंट्री इन टू अवर लाइफ ओवर द पास्ट सेवरल इयर्स थ्रू अवर मोबाइल्स थ्रू अवर पीसीस एंड अदर स्मार्ट डिवाइजेस वॉट शुड वी बिलीव इन एंड वॉट शुड वी डिस्कार्ड often there have been fights among friends and even among family members on the content that we routinely receive on whatsapp groups that are traded as truths does something become a truth if uttered several times are our sensibilities being attacked and our privacy invaded in yet unexplored ways these are some questions that i'll answer today an official statement from the information and broadcasting ministry a couple of years back said the government had amended the guidelines for accreditation of journalists taking cognizance the rising instances of fake news across media especially in newspapers and tv channels the move however was not to cover websites and social media platforms such as facebook twitter and whatsapp which are many times accused of publishing or spreading fake news subsequently however the order was withdrawn making everyone debate if such a law was required after all you've probably heard this term fake news 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 but what exactly is fake news and more importantly why should you care about it let's start by looking at its history wow well, wait that wasn't a shadow it's something moving what it's it's standing on legs those strange beings who landed in the jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet mars while fake news is nothing new the internet has made it easier than ever for fake news to spread and even happen in the first place Here's why. Before the internet, most people got their news from the paper, radio, or television. Because there were fewer sources providing news, it was in the best interest of each to be as reputable as possible. But with the internet, news moved online. Suddenly, anyone could post information on places like Facebook and Twitter. With so much information coming at us from all angles, it's easy to get duped. Especially when articles are made to look like verified news sources. People generally believe it to be true because it looks like news. This is happening more than ever. In fact, studies show that 75% of people who see fake news think it's real news. It can be really hard to tell when something is fake. Even our own eyes can be tricked. This is called a deep fake. Videos like this one use artificial intelligence to make it look like someone is saying or doing something they never actually did. Being duped by false information can have devastating effects on society and our democracy. That's why it's more important than ever for you to know what fake news is, be able to recognize it, and know how to stop it from spreading. So back to our original question, what is fake news? Fake news is when news, stories, or hoaxes are created to deliberately misinform or deceive. It also helps to know what fake news is not. News you don't like or simply don't agree with is not fake news. Stories that poke fun at real news on parody sites for example are not fake news. Opinion pieces on news sites are not fake news and honest mistakes are not fake news. Still, recognizing fake news is hard. That's why it's up to you to be critical of what you see and hear online. A good way to do this is by using the crap test. Find out if the article is current. Sometimes old articles are recirculated online. Ask if the site where the article is posted is reputable. Open a second tab on your computer and look into the site that hosts the article. Find out who the author is. 
Is it a person with verifiable credentials? Find out the purpose or point of view of the article. Is it trying to sell you something or convince you of their position? Finally, you can always use plain old common sense. If you see something online that makes you scratch your head, then it's time to start doing some sleuthing. These sites can help. It can be easy to be tricked online, but if you're smart and ask questions, you can stop fake news in its tracks. Whatever you do, don't make, share, send, or like fake news. So what is fake news? Is the term fuzzy? Is the news routinely dished out either in the print or the electronic media fake? Or is the way it is presented fake? Are results of an investigative journalistic brilliance presented in a certain context fake? Can the context be manipulated to present fake news as truth? Is freewheeling data on social media fake or when the same hurts an individual fake? Fake news is the deliberate attempt to publish hoaxes and or disinformation for the purpose of profit or influence. When a law is made to curb supposedly fake news, is it trying to curb the outcome of journalistic effort at gathering truth that may not always be convenient to the powers that be or the one that is masquerading as news and data on the social media. If it is the first, every right thinking Indian must take note of the tweet of Shekhar Gupta. Make no mistake, this is a breathtaking assault on the mainstream media. And if it is the second, then one can only predict the consequences at one's own peril. Many years back, innocent curiosity and the sheer din of the TV channels made me ask my journalist friend as to what constituted news and how does one define news. He narrated a story which rings an eerie silence even today. He was once covering an unfortunate event where three people lost their lives in a blast which occurred in the vicinity. His mobile rang in the midst of the mayhem that he was covering and he was asked to cover another event in another location. He protested with his editor and sought reasons for the same. His editor shot back saying the other place had an even bigger tragedy and that more people died there. My friend was lost in silence and is still probably looking for an answer. News unfortunately is reduced to entertainment and shock, the latest being fake news. Fake news dates back to many, many thousands of years. We are all aware of Mahabharata's famous anecdote, Ashwatthama Athakunjara, where an elephant named Ashwatthama was killed by Bhima. However, in order to overpower Drona, it was narrated to him as though his son by the same name was killed. News or new information must be impartial, neutral and objective. However, it is seldom reported without political bias. 
changing values in the system have given way to sensationalism and emotive stories for public consumption that has led to tabloid journalism. The already thin line between news and gossip seems to be giving way with the onslaught in social media. Today, the term breaking news has become trite as commercial broadcasting in the country is available almost 24 hours a day using live communications satellite technology to bring current events into consumers homes as the events unfold. Events that used to take hours or days to become common knowledge in towns or in nations are fed instantaneously to consumers via radio, television, mobile phone and the internet. Though technology has played a major role in the process, the news itself has somewhere died a quiet death. Social media takes over instantaneously and the so-called breaking news travels with all and sundry twisted imagination as it travels with the context changing by the second. No one would dare to hazard a guess as to when the breaking news has actually become fake news. Facebook, located in Silicon Valley, on a street named Hacker's Way, believes on a motto, move fast and break things. Don't be constrained by current norms like privacy. Norms can change. This is like free license to propagate anything on the web with no authentication. In fact, a top Facebook executive, Andrew Bosworth, seems to urge colleagues to focus on growth and connecting more people regardless of occasional ugly side effects like bullying and terrorism. The IT Act, the Information Technology Act, possibly cannot stifle innovators of marketplace of ideas approach. Freedom of speech allows us to say what we will, even if it is false. Half-truths rule the roost, though truth will eventually prevail. No wonder the difference between news and falsehoods is blurring. Leaders all over the world would want 
to rule forever. In that quest, they would use all available means to retain power. We know of several videos circulating on WhatsApp groups and other social media sites either extolling the virtues of a certain individual or his party or defaming the opponents and their parties. Even social occurrences are packaged to hit the intended with maximum effect. Are these true? Are these fabricated? They seem to work on the principle that repeated lies would eventually be held as truth. If these are targeted at people based on their individual preferences as alleged to have been done after a data analytics job of profiling people, the results can be devastating. Interestingly, Philip Hines describes fake news as the malicious distribution of false news and other related violations intending to cause panic, division, chaos, violence and hate or those which exhibit a propaganda to blacken or discredit one's reputation and levied penalties such as imprisonment of one to six months and a fine of 800 to 4000 US dollars. This however came out apparently to curb dissent to the government. We find this most of the time in most of the government's screenshots of tweets can be faked using native intelligence. Many browsers will allow one to change the text in one's local copy or a file, the text and images on a website that one's browser has downloaded to anything one may like. For example, in a newspaper site, if one screenshots the altered result, it will even have the original source's URL at the top and look perfectly real. The damage that can be caused will be unthinkable. In 2015, a faked Bloomberg article claiming that Twitter had 31 billion dollars takeover offer shifted the platform's stock price, at least temporarily. In 2017, a group of Russian hackers staged an elaborate hoax in which they mocked up a faked version of the Guardian site, complete with the URL in which the I in Guardian was replaced with a Turkish character that looked like I. This be as it may, when many mainstream journalists get grouped with those peddling misinformation and flouting common standards are left frustrated, the government will have to take note and curb the wannabes without going overboard. In a debate of curbing dissent, curbing freedom on all our national channels, we conveniently seem to have forgotten another aspect of fake news for which even money is exchanged paid news or paid content, which is so rampant through articles in the newspapers, magazines and the electronic media that blatantly create favorable opinion for the institution or even individuals paying for it. This is actually an advertisement without calling so. Over the years, neither the government nor any other regulator considered it a serious malpractice since it could deceive the citizens and even influence the voters. 
during election times. It is another matter or payment modes even violate tax laws and election spending laws. Democracy hinges on a fine thread of freedom of expression and freedom of speech. Paradoxically, we seem to accept paid news as legitimate but fake news illegitimate. Friends, I have tried to put a few thought provoking ideas before you. Ultimately, you are the one who will have to decide what you want to believe or disbelieve as truth. It's a good idea to take help of a little technology to understand if some message peddled as truth is actually true or fake. That will save a lot of diatribes in the groups that may be unwanted, that we subscribe to or within families, so some sanity prevails in our lives. It's important to stay up to date on the news. But with so many depressing headlines out there, it can be just as important to find some time in your day for a laugh. I'll make your life a little more enjoyable. There are those websites that offer funny political news and commentary, satirized reporting and weird news stories from real life that you must make a point to watch. The Onion, Cracked, Snopes or Clickhole are just a few of them. You could visit them and make your life just a little more easy. That's all for today. Thank you. Dhanyavad. Namaskar. Until we meet again. Omicron seems to be just around the corner. Follow the COVID protocols and stay safe and stay healthy. I promise we will meet the next Saturday.